there. I'm Dan Rhodes from Bradford County Conservation District. And today, we're gonna to talk about birds, birds of prey. So, first question, what is a bird and what makes it special? Okay, you might have a lot of different answers for that question and some of them might be um, more correct than others, but the main thing that makes a bird very, very special when you compare it to every other animal on earth is the fact that it has feathers, right? Okay, a feather is a very special feature of a bird. Okay, here's an example of a wild turkey feather. Feathers can come in lots of different uh, shapes and colors. Uh, they can have lots of different uses for the bird. But in general, feathers uh, keep a bird warm. They provide camouflage, they protect the bird, and usually uh, they allow the bird to fly, right? So let's see if I can fly here. Nope, no good. Must be something wrong with this feather. <clears throat> mm, well, or not. <laughs> so anyway, um, not every bird can fly though. That's, that's another interesting point, but they still have feathers. Some birds like penguins, they don't fly up in the air, but uh, they still have feathers. Uh, if you watch them swim underwater, uh, they actually appear like they're flying under the water while they're swimming. It's pretty cool. So anyway, uh, back to the birds in general. They also have some other uh, pretty cool features and adaptations, like they lay eggs, okay? Um, but that's not super unique since there's lots of other types of animals that do that too. Uh, fish, reptiles, amphibians, even a mammal or two lay eggs. Um, but uh, they're also warm-blooded, which means that they can control their own body temperature. No matter if it's hot or cold out, they're always the same. Their temperature is always the same inside, right? Uh, to escape the winter, when it gets super cold out, a lot of birds migrate, okay? Some of them migrate for long, long distances. Like this bird here, the osprey. They migrate from Pennsylvania all the way to South America, thousands and thousands of miles. So some birds, they fly long distances uh, to find enough food to survive. Other birds, like this ruffed grouse right here, which is the Pennsylvania State Bird, they, uh, they don't fly that much at all. In fact, they only fly in an emergency to escape a predator. And they can only fly uh, for short distances, okay? They can take off and fly really, really fast, uh, but they can only fly a short distance until they get tired and they have to land. So most of their life is spent on the ground. All right, that's where they find all their food. The seeds, nuts, berries, uh, sometimes even insects they'll eat. They also don't migrate. They stay around here all winter, okay? <clears throat> so lots of different birds in Pennsylvania, way over 400 different species. Depending on the year, there could be as many as 416, 418 species. That changes a little bit here and there. But um, <clears throat> they all live in different habitats. They all eat different foods. Some of them migrate, some of them don't. Um, one particular group of birds though that are very different from the rest are called birds of prey, okay? And birds of prey, basically that word, all that really means is a bird that eats other animals, okay? usually small mammals, uh, rept small reptiles, maybe fish, uh, maybe amphibians, and even uh, other small birds, okay? So what makes a bird of prey different from a, every other bird? And the answer is adaptations or features, okay? They all have special tools that help them to catch other animals, okay? <clears throat> Depending on the bird of prey, they have different tools different techniques, all right? A lot of them have what are called talons, okay? Talons are basically very specialized type of claw that they're super sharp, and this is actually a great horned owl foot, okay? Um, owls have very, very strong grip strength, okay? They can crush things with these talons, very, very sharp, okay? Hawks also, large hawks, 
like this red tail hawk foot. Okay, they have very, very sharp talons as well. They basically help the bird to, to catch and kill other animals. Okay, their beak is another very important tool. Okay, the beak of a bird of prey, not all of them, but most of them, it's, uh, it's curved, okay? It has a curved, sharp beak, like this osprey has, okay, that help it to eat meat. All right, not every bird of prey has a beak quite like that. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but most of them do because it helps them to tear off pieces of meat from the animals they catch. Okay, some birds of prey, like owls, okay, there's actually eight species of different owls in Pennsylvania, including this is, a, this is the largest, most common one uh, of all the Pennsylvania owls, the great horned owl. Okay, it's called that because it has what looks like horns on its head. They're actually just tufts of feathers. And no, they're actually not ears. They're just tufts of feathers uh, that are there to probably make itself look bigger and scarier. But uh, these birds, you know, they're nocturnal. Almost every owl is nocturnal, which means it only comes out at night. And they are the stealth bombers of the nature world. They don't need to be that fast because they very often will hunt in total darkness or almost total darkness. And the prey species they're trying to catch have no idea that they're there. All they really have to do is be quiet and relatively quick and they can catch their prey. Okay, so let's do an experiment to test this, all right? This theory that owls are really quiet, efficient hunters. So I have two different bird of prey wings here. Wing number one, this is from a red-tailed hawk. Wing number two, this is from a gray horned owl. They're about the same size. I'm gonna flap these different wings and you're going to listen for the sound. The difference is in the sound that they make. You ready? Here is the hawk wing. Here we go. All right. You can hear some noise there. But here, whoops, let me get the other owl wing. Here is the great horned owl wing. Ready? Wow. That is a lot quieter than the hawk wing, even though they're the same size. The reason for that is, if you look close, on the edges of all these feathers, there's like, there's a fringe. It's called a fringe. Basically, that's just an edge. It's like ragged and um, it's not that clean. And what that really does, that fringe, is it's a silencer for these wings. All right, so when they fly, it just makes them really, really quiet. Okay, <clears throat> and the other features that they need if they're going to hunt in darkness, right, to be super quiet, they need really good vision to be able to see things far away. So owls, they can zoom in just like they have binoculars on their face as much as 50 to 100 times better than human eyes can see. Uh, hawks, they can zoom in. Not quite as much as that, but also at least eight to 10 times uh, better than humans. Um, hearing. Every bird of prey generally has really good hearing to be able to figure out where their prey is. And uh, sometimes that means finding it or locating prey in darkness for owls. So if there's no moon out or the moon is covered with clouds, oh, because it's never cloudy right here in Bradford County, right? Um, you gotta be able to hear even the tiniest little mouse scratching around in the leaves to be able to find it. All right. <clears throat> Hawks and owls, they both actually eat the same kinds of animals. Uh, small rodents, usually. Um, rabbits, small birds, other animals, you know, lots of different uh, small animals. But they actually do it at different times. Okay, owls hunt at night, hawks hunt during the day. So they kind of like take shifts. The red-tailed hawk, like this, 
call the red tail because of its red tail. This hawk generally doesn't like the deep woods. Um, you'll see this hawk uh, hunting along, you know, open fields, even along the highway. Okay, I see these all the time driving down the highway. Uh, big tree overlooking the highway. They're always out there, you know, watching for something to run across. So these hawks, they love the open ground a lot better, like the edges of the woods leading into the fields, things like that. Um, and you know, since they're a big, much bigger, heavier hawk, they can eat much bigger animals. All right, um, this one here, this is not a super common resident in Pennsylvania because it only comes down to Pennsylvania um, once every few years. Uh, usually lives in northern Canada. It's a snowy owl. It's often a little bit heavier than the great horned owl, but because it's not a year-round resident, it's not the largest, most common owl in the state. And as you might have guessed, these white, these can be white, totally white, or they can be a mixture of brown and white. Um, and it helps it to blend in on the ground. They live their whole life right on the ground. Unlike these other owls that, that nest in trees, cavities in trees, the snowy owl, they don't do that because usually where they live in the northern um, Canadian tundra, there are no trees. It's too cold. So they have to learn how to hunt, how to nest, how to live right on the ground. So even when they come down to Pennsylvania, uh, just to survive the winter, if their food runs out in the north, um, while they're here, they'll still hunt off the ground. Okay, so if you want to see them, if you're lucky enough to find one or see one, typically you're going to look for uh, farm fields around, you know, open areas around lakes, um, even sometimes uh, airfields, you know, small airports. <clears throat> the osprey, back to the osprey, they uh, mostly live right on or near the water because they, they eat almost entirely a diet of just fish, okay? So they're a really awesome story, a conservation success story as well because they were totally gone from the state. There was a time a long time ago when people actually uh, shot hawks and owls. Um, they were encouraged to do that. Nowadays, they're very well protected by state and federal laws. So. Uh, anyone that does that is in, might be in really big trouble with the law. Not a good idea for lots of reasons. Okay, the bald eagle is another really amazing success story when it comes to conservation. Um, I don't have one of those. I don't have any parts of them, but uh, they were at one time there was only one or two nesting pairs left in Pennsylvania, the whole state, mostly because of pesticide pollution. Um, illegal hunting, polluted water, things like that. Uh, they just kept disappearing, they couldn't reproduce here. But through an aggressive conservation program, an effort and to ban pesticides like DDT, but finally, you know, within the last, oh, geez, like three years, the eagle, a bald eagle has finally uh, made it off the threatened list. It's now just a protected bird. Um, but not everything is as lucky as that. Other birds like the Eastern Peregrine Falcon have gone extinct as a result of that pollution. The Peregrine Falcons that we have here now are actually uh, introduced subspecies from the Western US, uh, the Western Peregrine. So if you're lucky, you can see one of them and a lot of the times uh, they nest in major cities. They love to eat pigeons and things like that. I'm not sure where there's any in Pennsylvania, but probably Philadelphia, probably has a nest somewhere. One of our smallest owls, the Eastern Screech Owl. This is not a baby, this is an adult. They only weigh about six ounces, all right? These are one of the uh, birds of prey, one of the types of owls that you're most likely to hear at night because they're more likely to live near people than a lot of other owls can because they can fit in a really tiny spaces. For an owl, they need a really big, you know, hole in a tree or an abandoned uh, crow or hawk nest. Uh, usually not right next to, you know, a house. 
Uh, but the screech owl, they can they can nest in a variety of, of uh, little wood woodpecker holes and things like that. And you might hear them at night. They have this quavering quivering whistle. It's called. It almost sounds like a, a horse that's whinnying. So people get freaked out about it, but it's the screech owl. You know, pretty harmless to people. Uh, so there's other birds of prey. They're even more different. All right, like, let's see, the great blue heron. Look at that. That bird does not have talons, uh, and it doesn't have a sharp curved beak. It does have a sharp, a sharp beak that it uses to grab fish. It actually swallows fish, amphibians, sometimes even reptiles whole. So if you look at its feet, I gotta actually have a better view of its feet over here. If we look at the feet, that's a great, that is a uh, blue heron foot, and it's not, they don't have sharp talons. What this foot does allow them to do is to step on mud without sinking in. It's almost like, it's a really wide foot that spreads out their weight, lets them, um, stay up on top of muck if they're walking in a pond or a marsh where they usually go. So not every bird of prey, you know, has talons. This one here is another good one. This is called a kingfisher. And you'll see these birds around Bradford County. They hunt fish. You usually see them uh, next to a lot of the major creeks. Also don't have talons or uh, a curved beak. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to another topic here. It's kind of gross, but uh, if you want to find owls or owl nests or roosts, look for this. What is this? This is a preserved owl pellet. An owl pellet is when an owl swallows its prey whole and then it throws up a pellet of basically hair, fur, and bones all the stuff that it can't digest. Uh, and usually you'll find these in piles underneath the trees where the owls roost. So if you want to find out where they nest and roost, look for these pellets. That's one example of a pellet. Here's another example. So sometimes they can be round. Sometimes they can be a little bigger, a little smaller. Other times they're kind of flattened out. But you can actually figure out all the things that an owl eats based on the pellets. All right. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you here is a couple other animal feet that, you know, you might think comes from a bird of prey, but it actually doesn't. This one here, right? I trick people with this one. Because they see this really sharp spur right here, they think, oh, that's a dangerous weapon, bird of prey. Nope, that's from a wild turkey. Turkeys are not birds of prey. They have these really dull, round claws or nails that they use to actually dig in the leaf litter. Okay, they're looking for seeds and nuts and berries and occasionally insects, so they're not a bird of prey. Okay, this one's from a Canada goose. Webbed, definitely not a bird of prey. The reason why the district is allowed to have these birds, it's actually illegal to even possess um, a mounted dead one if it was hit on the road or even a part of one of these birds without a special permit. So the district has both state and federal permits that allow it to, um, allow us to keep these birds for educational purposes. All right, all these birds of prey and, and actually migratory birds that are not game birds are protected in Pennsylvania. There are so many birds out there that you can learn lots of things from if you're just willing to go out and take a look. Take a listen. Either way, keep using your natural resources wisely.